Some of you are having issues getting the x-axis to move smoothly. For this, we first need to talk a bit about the extruder part's precision and dimensional accuracy. I know we can print nice miniatures and they come out great, but mechanical parts really require good dimensional accuracy, which is different from surface finish. The parts can come out slightly bent, warped or skewed, which might not be immediately apparent. The trickier ones are the carriage and the x-axis if you're printing those, as they determine how well your x-axis will run. I have multiple designs requiring good dimensional accuracy and it always boils down to the same few principles. Have a look at your carriage. All lines should be perfectly straight. You see how they stay flat against a flat table and don't have any play? Same for the bearing casing. This comes from the build plate flatness. This corner here should be perfectly square. One thing to check is that the build plate is flat when heated, otherwise mesh bed leveling will produce a deformed part as it tries to mold it to follow the shape of the build plate. If there are significant variations, you can use the nylock mode to adjust or only print in areas that are flat. If using Octoprint, you can use the Prusa Mesh Leveling plugin to visualize the values. Small deviations are fine, but larger deviations like 0.5mm and more are problematic. And I must say that errors of 2mm or more are possible. Also make sure that there are no specks of dust or filament residue underneath the build plate, which will not trigger any warnings. I know these seem like tedious tasks and they're not fun to do. For me they help with all my prints and make a lot of problems go away in the long run, so I think they're worth it. Another even more important aspect is how horizontal is your x-axis compared to the bed. The printer has two Z motors, but only one Z driver, meaning it cannot easily compensate for a tilted axis. The only way for a Prusa printer to correct for this is to perform a Z calibration. This has its limitations as it depends on the top mount to be aligned with the bed, but is better than just leaving it in whatever position it happens to be. If the x-axis is tilted, the firmware will try to compensate using mesh leveling and will produce skewed parts. Imagine building a house on an incline without making a flat foundation. Just using the terrain as a reference, all the floors would end up tilted. You may have noticed in my assembly video that I had some issues with the accents being skewed with the nuts not aligning anymore and the carriage was not moving smoothly. I had to reprint and replace those parts eventually because they were causing all sorts of problems. If Z calibration doesn't fix it, with the printer turned off, you can place a sheet of paper under the build plate and move the carriage left and right, checking the distance between the nozzle and the plate and manually adjust the Z motors before printing. A tedious task, but can improve the results. If using an SKR board, this is done automatically, but let me know if you have a better solution using the stock INZ main board. Another aspect of calibration is making sure the extrusion is not too little or too much. Over extrusion can, for example, make it harder for the bearings to fit in, or the extruder radiator might tend to pop out instead of it being held in. I know you've done the extrusion calibration, I have too. However, with my printers, I notice that they tend to over extrude when printing with more perimeters. You know how the slicer uses advanced math to calculate the filament flow, but then Prusa slicer reduces it to 95% because that looks better despite the math. Same here, when printing with more parameters, the print could use less flow. If you're experiencing over extrusion, you can try printing at around 95% flow rate or reduce the extrusion multiplier to 0.95 or so on top of the slicer settings and see if this improves the parts. On filament choice, I mentioned that I printed my extruder in ASA. This is because I use an enclosure and can reliably print ASA and I need my extruder to withstand higher temperatures without melting. This does not mean that you need to print the extruder in ASA. In fact, I encourage you to print most parts in PTG. First of all, if you're not using an enclosure, then you probably only print PLA, PTG, TPU and the like, so your extruder won't start melting, except for maybe the shroud. What happened for some of you? was that the parts warped or cracked 
especially the carriage, which has to be printed upright and is one of the more important parts to get right. Even if it looks like it might be okay, any deformation or warping on the carriage will pretty much guarantee further problems down the road. So please don't use ASA or ABS if you don't have an enclosure, at least for the carriage part. May I remind you that the stock extruder is printed in PTG and is just fine. I know it sounds cool to use more exotic materials, but for this part it is way more important to have dimensional accuracy than to have a stiffer or more heat resistant part. Also, if using ASA or ABS, please, please don't stay in the room with the printer and open the windows to let fresh air in as soon as the print is finished. They produce fumes that will make you just a tiny bit less healthy even if you don't feel sick right away. I plan on having a long and healthy life and wouldn't take any unnecessary risks. Another aspect is the filament quality. The filament will absorb moisture unless kept in a dry box and even then it can still be moist. I've seen cheap filament moist fresh out of the sealed pack. For some filaments it's a matter of hours before they become moist. You will hear tiny pops of the nozzle as the water becomes vapor and ejects out of the orifice. Moist filament will significantly reduce layer adhesion and will affect surface finish, so please use dry filament and use a dehydrator if possible to dry it for several hours. I wouldn't use ovens unless you can set them to about 70 degrees Celsius, otherwise you might risk melting the filament. Surface finish can also have an impact taken to the extreme. Here's a part I just printed in some average PTG material. And here's the same part printed in Prussiament. Different colors so it's hard to tell the difference but the Prussiament looks and feels smoother. I'm merely doing a comparison and I'm not saying you need to get the Prussiament. These kind of errors are actually fine. But more than this can start to affect the extruder performance. Especially inside the bearing casing and at the extruder mounting points. There is a very small line at the entrance to prevent bearings from going out, but aside from that, the inside should feel smooth. If not, use sanding or use a drill bit and try to smooth out the walls. A 15mm drill bit would perfectly fit, but those are harder to find, so even a smaller one is fine. Just move it across the surface while spinning. For the carriage, check that the bearings are easily sliding on the rod. If too stiff, sand or use a drill bit to hopefully smooth out any imperfections in the casing. Especially for Igus dryline bearings. Normal bearings tend to better handle misalignment, at least for a while. I use Igus dryline bearings and many of you assume they are must. And while I do consider them to be a great choice, you can run into trouble with the slightest print errors in the parts. So if you're not very experienced with debugging printer problems, then it can take a long time to figure out what is causing various problems. So in that case I recommend sticking with the stock bearings or the Misumi bearings if you can afford those, and perhaps try out Igus bearings only after everything works fine for a while. To give you a reference, let me take out my belt here and see how easy it is to push the carriage. If it's hard to push then you're in for a rough ride and I would suggest trying to fix it as soon as possible. A bit of friction wouldn't cause any harm in theory, but the problem is that the firmware is very sensitive to friction when calibrating or homing and this is a risk with Igus bearings as they tend to add a bit of friction. You can use a lot of grease for a good start. They are self-lubricating, so they should work for a long time, but feel free to clean the rods from time to time and apply a bit of grease if it looks like the self-lubrication could use an extra boost. And whenever using these bearings, understand that they require a special casing for proper tensioning, otherwise you can get really bad results either because of slop or because they're being bent in an effort to reduce the slop, leading to bad performance. There are numerous online posts on this, some claiming great performance while others are sharing their frustration. I never had any problems with them, but the main thing to understand is that they're not a simple direct replacement for linear ball bearings. However, if you are still having issues with homing and calibration due to the bearings having a bit of friction, a solution would be to lower the firmware sensitivity for this friction. 
I normally don't advise modifying your own firmware, but luckily the user Lockray Alfie already did this and posted the source code as well as the compiled hex file for the latest 3.9.1 firmware. I have not tried this build myself, but it is one option you can explore. These tips should better prepare you for installing the Pistop Extruder. If you encounter further problems, feel free to write on my Mihai subreddit and please take a moment to fill in the feedback form, otherwise it'll be very hard for me to keep track of all the issues. Now smash that like button if you got value out of this video and be awesome!